Hey everybody, it's Jim from Evolve Lab. If you're like me and so many others in the industry, you have spent countless hours on so many projects in Revit, not only building your model, but an equal or greater amount of time documenting it. Placing dimensions, notes, tags, creating views, creating sheets. I personally used to wish for a better way to automate these mundane tasks that not only took up so much of my time, but project budget as well. Well now with Evolve Lab's Glyph, there is a better way, allowing us to automate these documentation tasks, making us more efficient, and freeing us up to spend our time on projects in other ways. Let's take a look. We will get started by jumping into a Revit model and walking through some of the features which make Glyph such a powerful tool. So within Revit, I'm going to navigate to the Evolve Lab tab, find Glyph, and open it. With Glyph, we've created what we're calling the task system. If you take a look at the user interface, all of these items are tasks which we can automate using Glyph. And each one of them is categorized under these headings. So we have create, we have dimension, we have tag, we have import, and we have place. What makes Glyph so special is it's not simply a plugin with a collection of a few automated tasks built into it. No, what really makes it special is it gives us the ability to create our own tasks and not only that, we can create what we're calling bundles, which are a group of tasks that can be run with a single click and again, fully customizable by the user. So if I come up here to this button, add a new task or bundle, I'm given the option here, create task or create bundle. Under create task, if I pull down action, each one of these options will match the categories in which all of our tasks are organized. So I'm going to do create a view from scope box. I will give it a name and I will hit create. Okay. So if I come up here under create, I should have my new task listed here. And so now I can see it right there. Create views by scope box new. And if I click on that, I'm given some different options. I can just run it or I can come here to settings. You can see I have these toggles to make floor plan. I can make a reflected ceiling plan, structural plan, all these different types of views that I can create using this specific task. So if I come back to make floor plan, um, I can change the family type, the view type. So right now in this model, we only have floor plan uh, view type. I can set the view template to whatever template I want. I can change this view creation setting. So it's either a new view or a dependent view. And if it is a dependent view, all I have to do is select the parent view. But in this case, I'm going to do a new view. And then right here, this is a nice feature for a naming scheme. So I can set up a standard naming scheme within this task so that every time I run it, it will follow that same scheme and follow maybe our company standards, which we've set. And so it starts with parameter and I'm given a list of parameters for that view. So in this case, I'll select level. Uh, and then there's a second parameter in this case, uh, scope box name, because I've created by scope box. And I have the option to add a custom suffix to the view name here. Um, and I actually have the option to add multiple uh, custom suffixes. So you can see how glyph allows you to get pretty customized with your view naming. And once again, these are set within the task. So every time you run it, these view naming standards will be used. If I want to remove any of these, I can hit the minus sign. Um, I also have the option to use separators. And if I do that, I can set what that separator is, maybe a dash or an underscore. And it will put those in between each one of these parameters or uh, custom fields. I also have this other setting, which is called parameter setter. So if I come here and add a setter, I can select a parameter, which is applied to views. For example, I could choose discipline and I have another tab up here, which is called information. And this is a place where I can come and add a custom description for my task, which will describe exactly what it does. Under the selection tab is where I can come when I'm ready to actually execute this task that I've created. 
And since I've set this up as create view by scope box, I'm given a list of levels that exist in the model and a list of the scope boxes that exist in the model. So I can select as many of these levels as I want and as many scope boxes as I want. Or I can hit this checkbox, which will select all levels or all scope boxes. Um, in this case, I'll just do area A for all levels. And then when I hit run, it will create a new floor plan view for all levels using that scope box. So in a similar way, Glyph can not only be used to create views automatically, but we can create sheets in a number of ways. We can dimension our views and dimension our sheets automatically. We can tag all of our views, uh, tag all views on a sheet. Um, as you may know, Revit has a feature which will uh, tag all not tagged. Um, however, that's limited to only the view that you're in. Using Glyph, we can tag multiple views at the same time, and we can also place views on sheets automatically. So what I would like to do is run through a few of these quickly just to show you how fast we can start documenting our drawings uh, using this automation tool. So to give another example of how to automatically create some views, I'm going to create views by room, and maybe instead of floor plans, I want to create some interior elevations of this room 249. So I'm going to check make elevation. And so now I have some of the same options that I had before, but this time we're doing uh, an interior elevation. For view template, I can select my architectural, uh, let's do casework elevation, um, elevation height. I will select room height. Then we have the option for order of elevations. I'll do, I'll stick with clockwise. There's a view crop offset, which we can change as needed. Um, and then of course we have our naming scheme for custom naming conventions. Switching back to the selection tab, I now have the option to select any rooms that I want to create an interior elevation of. So in this case, I'm just going to focus on this room right here, 249. Uh, I'll find it on the list, which I saw right there. And if I hit run, Glyph has created all of the interior elevations for that room automatically. Now I'd like to dimension some of my views. So coming down here to dimension views by category, uh, you can see here that I have the option to select any view that I have in my model. I also have this button here, which allows me to select elements. So if I click on that, I can pick views, which will uh, allow me to pick views specifically from the project browser, or I can just select active view. In this case, I'm going to do that. And I also need to select which categories I will be dimensioning. Right now I have walls and curtain walls selected. If I wanted to, I could add a category here, which would add an additional category. So if I want to do, you know, dimension windows or anything else uh, that exists in this model, I have the option to continue adding categories as needed. In this case, I'm going to remove it because all I want to do is walls uh, and curtain walls for this example. So now under task settings, I can select my dimension type, and this should list all dimension styles which are currently in the model. I can come here to wall dimension options, and this will give me the options for dimensioning my walls on this floor plan. So I'm going to dimension my interior walls, my exterior rough openings, uh, overall exterior wall length, and overall building dimensions. In this example, uh, what point of reference do I want to use? In this case, I'll just do finish face exterior. What's my offset from element? How far do I want the dimension string to be from the element I'm dimensioning? Um, and then what do I want to tie those dimension strings to? So I'm going to tie those to the nearest grid. And so now when I hit run, we should see some dimensions pop up automatically on my floor plan. And there they are. So you can see that Glyph has dimensioned every element in this view um, that I have asked it to. And it has offset it from the wall, a certain dimension, but you could of course customize that to look however you want it to look. Um, and keep in mind, this is just one view. If I wanted to, I could uh, dimension every view in my model. And even if I have to make a few adjustments as to where those dimensions are located, um, the time consuming part is just placing the dimensions. So Glyph actually gets all the dimensions placed um, and with precise accuracy because we're telling it exactly where to snap to on that wall. So if we uh, want it to go to the core face or the core center line, we know that it is accurate and we don't have to worry about snapping to the wrong part of that wall. 
When it comes to creating sheets, uh, Glyph can quickly create sheets in a number of ways. Uh, just a quick example, if I want to create sheets by level, I can click on this one. And here it gives me the option to select which levels I want to create sheets from. I will select all of them, come here to my task settings, and Glyph will give me some options here. So we have our starting sheet number. So uh, whatever I put in here, Glyph will automatically incrementally number the sheets uh, going forward. So I'll just stick with A101. Uh, we can choose which title block, and then you can come up with your naming scheme here as well. So I'm just gonna hit run, and we should see over here in sheets, which we did. Uh, Glyph tells us create sheets by level was run successfully. Um, and down here, we can see all of these sheets were created automatically. Now you can also, uh, if you have uh, an Excel spreadsheet with a list of drawings that you're gonna have on your project, you can of course come here to import sheets by spreadsheet, which is another quick way to get all of your sheets created in your model. So now I've created some views, I've created some sheets, I've dimensioned some views. Now I'd like to place my views actually on the sheets uh, using Glyph. So if I come down here to place and place views on sheet, under the selection tab, it's given me the option to uh, select which sheets I'm placing views onto and which views I'd like to place. So in this case, I'm going to select A4 uh, for casework elevations, and I'll throw some on A4.1 as well. Um, so I can select two different sheets or as many sheets as I'd like. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab all of my casework elevations that I have in this model. So I'm going to grab all of those. And I'm going to come over here to task settings. Okay, so now I have some options as to how I want to place these views on the sheets. One thing I can do is come to map views with sheets. So if I click on that, I'm given a list of all of the views which I selected to be placed. And right now they are under this category of unassigned views. But what you can see here are the two sheets that I selected as well. And so I can start adding views to sheets. And I can add as many as I want to the first sheet. And here on this pull down, I can select individual views that I want to place. And then if I wanted to, I could start uh, putting the rest on the other sheet. And so now I have all of the views assigned. I'm going to say finish. Right here, I can change which viewport type uh, I'll be using when I place these views. And so I should be shown all of the viewport types which exist in the model. And then there are some other options here, which I'll talk about in a minute, but I'm just going to hit run and show what that does. So now you can see on A4, it's placed the three views which I assigned to it. And if I come back to A4.1, uh, you can see these views have been placed here as well. And so now if I want to start dragging these around, um, I can start arranging them exactly how I want them. But uh, Glyph does put them in the general area that we've told it to. Um, and we also have some other options as to where to place these on the sheet, which I'll talk about now. Right here, we have the option to change our layout template. Right now, I only have a one column layout, but if I come here to add new layout, Glyph will show me a map of my sheet, um, and I can start to uh, actually change the layout to be customized. So what I'll do is I will put a divider here. Um, so you can see it gives me uh, two different spaces, and if I hit Shift, it will uh, switch the orientation of that line. So I'm just gonna do something like that, and I'll say Finish. Now you can see the new layout, which I just created. And what I can do now is start assigning these zones to different view types. So I'm going to select this one and zone pack item. What do I want to put there? I want to put views of type, uh, we'll say elevations. Here I could do views for floor plans. And over here, maybe I'll change this to uh, legends and we'll say uh, floor plan notes. Down here we have some additional zone settings. And if I pull that down, you can see you can actually start to change your horizontal and vertical spacing um, and really customize how you want those views to be arranged when you start placing them on the sheets. As I come back to my selection tab, I'm going to change which sheet I'm working with. And I'm also gonna pick some different views. So I'm going to grab a floor plan call out and some interior elevations as well. Okay, switch back to my settings. 
and still using my new layout I'm going to map views to the sheet so I'm going to click through my views and add those to the sheet like that and finish I'm going to hit run and we should see those views added to the sheet And now Glyph has added the views to the drawing, which match the zones that I had set up previously. So far, we've been focusing on the individual tasks of Glyph, but the feature that ties it all together is when we start talking about our bundles. So a bundle is basically a series of tasks that you can group together and then run with the click of one button. And we already have three bundles that come with the install, but all of these are completely editable by the user. And if I pull this down, you will see all of the individual tasks which are included within this bundle. So in this example, the curtain wall bundle, the first thing it's doing is it's gonna create my views by category. So it's creating interior elevations of every curtain wall within the model or every curtain wall that I select. It's then going to dimension those views that it creates. It's gonna create the sheets to place the views on, and then it's going to place the views on the sheets. And it's going to accomplish all of this with just one click of this button. Another really powerful feature about Glyph is that all of these tasks and bundles are importable and exportable. So you could send them to your coworkers, you could import them from other projects, or you could have them as part of your template. So every time you start a project, you have the same bundles available to your team. Notice that if I want to add any other tasks, I can come here, add task to bundle. If I click on that, here are all of the tasks which have been created so far. And I'm going to tag views by category. I'm gonna add that. So tag views by category has been added. So if I come in here, I'm going to select it. I can still set the individual settings of each task within the bundle. And what I wanna tag this time, I want to pull this down. I'm gonna tag my curtain panels. So I will find that curtain panels. Now I only want to select certain curtain walls for this example. So if I select the create views by category task, it's going to bring up the properties for that task. And right here where it says walls, curtain walls, I'm going to actually select the items from the model. And I will just grab a couple curtain walls here. Do these ones and finish. And now I'm going to go ahead and run my bundle and it should execute all of these tasks for those three curtain walls that I selected. Now that's completed running. It looks like we have a new curtain wall elevation sheet created. Let's take a look at that. And there we have it. We have three new curtain wall elevations that have been created. They've been dimensioned, they've been tagged, and they've been placed on a sheet all with one click. Thank you so much for checking out this video about Evolve Labs Glyph. If you're interested or you have any questions, please reach out to us. Check out our website, evolvelab.io. I placed a link in the description of this video. And stay tuned for more videos where we will take a deeper dive into some of the other features that Glyph has to offer. Have a great day.